folks, I am told today we have a legendary guest, the one and only Darwin. I know. I have so many questions for him. What was it like in the Galapagos? What kind of package options do I have? And what the evolution of its RISC-V coprocessor is all about? Wait, I'm totally mixing up two different Darwins, aren't I? Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Jog Talk. Yes, we are talking about the newest member of Maxim's Darwin family of microcontrollers today. Zach Metzinger from Maxim Integrated and I are digging into the details of this new MCU. It's energy efficiency, security features, error correction code, and a whole lot more. But absolutely no tortoises. We'll leave that to the other guy. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Maxim Integrated. Hi, Zach. Thank you so much for joining me. Amelia, thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. So we're going to meet the newest member of the Darwin family of microcontrollers today. Now, since we have talked a lot about Darwin over the years here on Chalk Talk, I'm super excited to talk to you today, Zach. But before we get started, what's under the hood of this one? Well, there's actually quite a bit of functionality under the hood of the Max 32655. This chip combines a powerful main processor, Bluetooth low energy, strong security, and a wealth of communication interfaces all into one IC. Looking at the block diagram and going around from the left hand in a clockwise manner, we can see that it has an ARM Cortex-M4F at 100 megahertz. This includes the floating point and the memory protection extensions. The chip does feature a standard DMA, a SIMO buck, which takes one input voltage up to 3.6 volts and generates all the required device supply voltages. It has a large flash and SRAM. It's oriented for IoT leaf nodes. And up to 32 kilobytes of that SRAM is protected by ECC. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. The communication interfaces on the right-hand side are hard IP. It's not one IP with different behaviors. So we actually have two quad spy master or slave interfaces, three I2Cs, an I2S for audio, three four-wire UARTs, and two two-wire UARTs. One of the shining features of this chip is the BLE 5.2 radio with its dedicated RISC-V coprocessor. We have pulse trains, which allow for PWM of LEDs or motor control, in addition to being a low-resolution DAC with some external circuitry. A 10-bit analog-to-digital converter with comparators allows us to interface to the outside world timers, uh, four of those with uh, high performance and two are low power. So we'll talk a little bit more about the high performance versus low power later. An RTC or a real-time clock and two watchdog timers that allow recovery from errant programming. One of the final features of this chip is hard security, very high security, and that's hardware AES and CRC engines with a true random number generator and a secure boot ROM. Okay, Zach, so what are the options when it comes to packaging? Yes, this device comes in two packages, uh, industry standard CTBGA with a 0.8 millimeter ball pitch, and then a cost-saving wafer level packaging. Uh, the latter package does reduce the number of GPIO, but it also reduces the board footprint by 84%. Wow, that's a lot. Now, Zach. It is. How do these Darwin MCUs stand up against other solutions in this arena? Well, Amelia, the Darwin line excels at active mode power, uh, dual core operation and security, while still maintaining competitive sleep mode power consumption. The dedicated optimized BLE coprocessor maintains a device-to-device -device connections without the main CPU intervention or waking up to consume more power. The BLE radio currents on these devices are lower than competitors by up to 30%. The flash and SRAM sizes are much larger, allowing more complex algorithms and additional non-volatile data storage. And finally, as we discussed before, error correction code on SRAM provides robust operation in safety-critical environments. Okay, so Zach, what does this new addition to the Darwin family buy me as an engineer? Okay, in a nutshell, the Darwin family brings four major advantages to customer designs. Energy efficiency. We have our Bluetooth radio with 4.12 milliamp when it's actively receiving a packet and 4.17 milliamp when transmitting it, zero dBm output power. We have smart integration. 
We have the BLE 5.2 transceiver with its dedicated coprocessor, a SIMO DC to DC power conversion providing all of our rails, and up to seven clock sources. The third area is high performance, featuring an ARM Cortex M4 with the floating point unit at up to 100 megahertz. High reliability and resiliency against memory errors by incorporating ECC on memories and incorporating up to 52 GPIO. Finally, as mentioned in the first slide, it has strong security, an AES hardware engine, a true random number generator, and secure boot, which preserves the chain of trust for customer firmware protection. Okay, great. So, Zach, do you have an example of this new MCU in action in a real-world design? Absolutely. Maxim provides the Max Ref Des 104 reference design, a health sensor platform which showcases the Max 32666 dual-core MCU. The design also integrates a 2-in-1 PPG plus ECG analog front-end, or AFE, sensor, the MAX 86176, a human body temperature sensor, the MAX 3208, a Maxim power management IC, the MAX 20360, and a three-axis accelerometer. When compared to the Nordic NRF52 series MCU, a power savings of up to 40% can be seen. More information on this reference design can be found on the Mauser website. Okay, Zach, so in these types of designs, soft errors can cause all sorts of havoc, right? Absolutely. With the increase in memory densities and lowering of transistor voltage thresholds, a single bit error has a greater chance of causing erroneous system operation. With MCUs being incorporated into many safety critical systems, such as industrial control and healthcare applications, Software failures caused by these bit flips could lead to injury or death. So, Zach, before we move any further, what causes these soft errors or bit flips in semiconductor memories? It's a good question. Most soft errors are caused by high-energy cosmic rays or radioactively contaminated materials used during IC manufacture. Charged particles can bump a transistor's delicate balance and flip the stored value from one value to the opposite value. Even the amount of atmosphere above our heads makes a difference. At an altitude of 10,000 feet above sea level, about a third of the way to the altitude where commercial air traffic flies, the soft error rate can be up to 14 times higher than at sea level. This is due to the shielding effect of our atmosphere. Wow, okay. So, Zach, how are you guys addressing this issue? Maxim addresses this issue by introducing an error correction code feature on the latest members of the Darwin family. This code can detect a single bit error in memory and provide, using a mathematical algorithm, the proper value to the CPU. In the unlikely event that two bits have errors in any one 32-bit word, the ECC algorithm can detect this condition, but it cannot provide the corrected values. This capability can be used to trigger a fail-safe mode of operation, usually by halting any safety-critical operation and initiating a reset of the MCU. Okay, so I know that Risk Five is a big hot topic these days. Can you tell me a bit about the RISC-V BLE coprocessor that is included in this new Darwin family MCU? Sure. We are very excited about the RISC-V architecture. We chose it for the BLE coprocessor on the Darwin family due to its extensive configurability and small size. These features translate into a tailored solution that we can incorporate into the low power domain. That allows us to keep the main CPU in a deep sleep mode while still maintaining connections to peer devices. Okay. So, Zach, if my audience is ready to get started using the MAX32655, do you guys have an evaluation kit to help them along their way? Yes, we do, Amelia. We have several evaluation kits available, the MAX32655 EV kit and the 32655 Feather. The EV kit allows for access to all the pins of the device, and full evaluation of the 32655, while the Feather is a much smaller form factor, which allows specific examples from our SDK to be evaluated. Okay, great. Well, Zach, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Maxim Integrated. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.